Hey, what's going on, YouTube, Facebook Live? This is your boy, Rich Taylor, bringing you another iteration of First Appearance Friday. This is episode number five. It's actually 5.1. <laughs> Explain that later. Thank you guys for joining. Um, nobody in the live chat right now, but uh, I'm sure people will trickle in. Uh, we have an interesting subject to talk about. Before we get into that, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Double click that notification bell. Make sure it says all because a lot of people are saying that the notifications aren't um, hitting their phones or whatever. And if you can share my content and tag spec media with two S's, well, uh, man, I will give your secondary market store, your brand, your IG, your your Twitter, your TikTok, whatever, as, as shout outs across across my channel along with my my friends and family's channel uh, beyond wednesday's house of stein and shows that we appear on uh to help you out uh that way we can pay it back so thank you guys make sure you leave a comment i love comments uh positive or negative i'll take them all all right make sure uh if you guys are flipping comics or it, well if you're if you're shipping comics uh, you know, you're using the United States Postal Service, you know, you want to make sure that it gets there on time and all that. But the most important thing is make sure that your your collectible literature, floppies, magazine, whatever it is, is safe and secure. And that is Gemini Comic Miller's uh, Gemini Comic Supply dot com. Use the code popcorn 99. You'll get 10 percent off your next purchase. These things are awesome. I, I just sold a Marvel preview to the origin of Frank Castle and his first appearance of his wife fit right in there. So cool. All right, guys, here is first on the slate. Let me get up in here. Um, let's see. I'll get to here. So pretty, pretty interesting slide here. Um, I thought this was cool. I was messing around on Reddit today. I, I started a subreddit about three or four years ago with tacos and comics or red five comics. We call it uh, new comic book day spec. Yeah. So original, right. And uh, it's got like 75, 80 people. And I was in there messing around and somebody dropped this in there. And I, and he's like, man, look at this. This is Disney's uh, way that they're, they're describing uh, venom in their little, uh, their little thumbnail. It says, this is Disney, Disney plus the evolution story of Marvel's most ignorant, it, uh, what does that say? Ign enigmatic, complete, and badass character, Venom. I mean, how many times have we heard D Disney say arse ass? <laughs> it's pretty interesting. I thought that was cool. All right, so we have some news uh, coming from the MCU. But before we get into that, let me go ahead and get into the chat real quick. Southpaw, what's up, man? I put your uh, channel in my communities tab. I couldn't figure out how to do that for so long. I wanted to make sure Brian and Ben and Mel um, and the people that have shown me support and that I respect and care about are, you know, I'm paying it back. So I put you in there. So hopefully you get some some hits on your, your YouTube or what have you. But thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, right. So let's get back into this. Um Let's see. Okay, so set photos from Chinatown set of Captain America 4 include a potentially major plot twist. This came out this morning at 10 a 10.01 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, okay? And let's go ahead and uh, share the screen. I want you guys to see this real quick here. Da, 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 da. Where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? Bam. There we go. All right, so... Basically, there's some info coming in. There's this tweet that basically um, from this guy named Christopher Okendo, photographer. Downtown Atlanta, that's, uh, if you guys don't know, Atlanta, Georgia is where like 90% of movies are being filmed in the U.S. right now. It's almost like 95 plus percent of the MCU stuff. But anyways, it says downtown Atlanta transformed into Chinatown for filming of Captain America New World order so here is the um let's get the uh let's get these uh picks up here all right 
as you can see, it has a, uh, I I'm going to read the rest of this, but check out that. Let's look at the pick. So this is the, the set of Captain America four in Atlanta. Obviously they probably rented, uh, this part of downtown Atlanta. It looks like it's, uh, it kind of looks like downtown LA actually without the homeless people. And, um, yeah, it's like kind of like a, a feng shui. I don't know if that's like, uh, properly said um it's just an asian style in in particular chinese style um uh, surroundings uh let's go into the next one here's some interest interesting uh little uh backgrounds and easter eggs and what have you which we're going to get to in a second and uh here is a another photo here and that's pretty cool um still i mean it's ghost town it's just a it's just a movie set i like how they did the the fake little uh <laughs> graffiti right there and then here is the last one i believe this is the last one pecking new york restaurant okay so that restaurant looks familiar to me um uh that what that restaurant was in the netflix series i think the daredevil uh punisher netflix series huh interesting all right so let's go ahead and uh Let's pull this back up and let me go ahead and read this because this is this is pretty damn interesting, guys. So, anyways, getting back into it, um, as part of Chinatown set, a restaurant reveals that the scenes being shot on location are set on Canal Street in Chinatown. While it's more likely than it's not an important detail, Canal Street or Canal Street, uh, Canal Street, yeah has actually been an important location in the pages of Marvel Comics 616 continuity in the past, as the location has served as a hideout for the Hand and the White Dragons, a gang under control of Mr. Negative. So remember when everything, when Captain America, um, I'm not kidding, uh, the last Spider-Man movie was filming and we everybody had the Miles rumors when we saw that truck. It was that truck and it said feast F dot E dot A dot S dot T dot. Well, that is a Mr. Sinister owned business. So that got this whole train started with him. Um, Miss, oh wait, is it Mr. Sinister or is it uh, Mr. Negative? Sorry, Mr. Negative owned business. So um, that's like his corporation or whatever. Uh, here's uh, Electra in the comics. Looks like Frank Miller. The addition of either Mr. Negative or the hand to the film which is Captain America 4, a.k.a. Captain America New World Order, which is already packed full of villains, would be shocking. How, however, given so little is known about the plot of the film and Marvel Studios' history with mashing up characters, it's not out of the question that the Serpent Society is somehow tied to one or the other. Of course, it's far more likely than it's just a nice touch on a set piece that may not even make the final cut of the film, but it's interesting nonetheless so uh yeah i think that's pretty pretty interesting um uh, so it basically what this looks like to me is what's it saying to me and based on everything that um i've watched i'm thinking that they're really going to be tying in this captain america for thunderbolt daredevil born again punisher these street level these street level characters i i just have this feeling they're going to I just have this feeling they're going to use the Captain America um, adaptation characters and they're going to keep them on the street level characters. And then the, the powerful characters, uh, you know, Thor and and, uh, you know, all those uh, people, they're going to be going against the cosmic powerhouses like the Beyonder and Dr. Doom and stuff. But, yeah, that's pretty interesting. And also, I know I know I read an article. It wasn't recent. I think it was in like 2021 um, that Feige said he was he was excited to tie in the Netflix uh, series into the MCU canon. So, I mean, technically it, it kind of is already, uh, we got weird rules with that, which I can explain in another time, but yeah, it's uh, pretty interesting. It's a great time to be alive right now. Um, I just hope that uh, these movies are better than phase four and series as well. Okay. So we have a new casting as well in, um, in uh captain america 4 so you guys probably recognize uh, uh rosa salazar from alita battle angel which i loved i thought that movie was awesome i've seen it like 15 times uh she's joined the cast of captain america 4 it's confirmed given the spotlight is always shining on the next marvel studios project surprise castings are a rare occurrence 
while most lead roles are scooped by trades, even supporting roles are big no are big news and are often leaked by scoopers and or smaller sites and insiders. Captain America New World Order, a.k.a. Captain America 4, pulled off that rare feat by casting the members of the villainous Serpent Society in complete secrecy. Had it not been for photographer Christopher Okendo, which we saw, we just saw his Twitter um, earlier, staking out the Brown Airport location for the film, the revelation that WWE star Seth Rollins has had been cast as one of the Serpents may have stayed a surprise into the film's 2023 slated release. While Rollins was easily identified the identity of his female counterpart in the side in the scene, Serpent Society member Diamondback has remained a mystery until now. So Charles Murphy is saying um, he, he this is exclusive from him, can share that Alita battle star and Maze Runner actor slash actress Rosa Salazar as the actress who joined Rollins on the set as Diamondback. While Salazar's reps did not respond to inquiries about her status on the project, we are confident that she is attached to it. Um, all right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue this. The Serpent Society's role in the film is unclear, but in the comics, as you guys know, they served as an antagonist to the Captain America multiple times as for salazar's diamondback her history with captain america is a little more complicated though a member of a criminal organization diamondback once dated steve rogers so her presence in the film could mean interesting things on a horizon for sam wilson what does that have to do with sam will okay, okay this guy is reaching on his theories but it, it, fair enough she's an awesome actor and she she, she she's hot. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I have a huge crush on her, but uh, super, super talented, um, very witty, uh, funny. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. Uh, hey, what's up, uh, Sith Rule? What's up, man? I owe you a book. Book's coming. Um, I, I have so much stuff I haven't sent out, but it's coming, guys. I swear there's giveaways. I still owe you guys from the last two to four months. It's coming. I swear, my God, my life. I got it wrapped. It's just I got these deadlines, so hang in there, guys. All right, so let's move on because um, we got some really cool spec. I spent a lot. I spent a lot of time putting this together for you guys because I like doing this. I think this is super fun, and uh, I wish uh, more channels would do this. I know a few did. Uh, Lords of Longbox was one of the originals that that got into this stuff, and um, you know Brian does it, and and a few of our friends, Mel, and stuff like that on Instruct and Chat. But anyways, uh, so going back into this, um, into that article, um, that article is alluded from the May 16th article that Charles Murphy dropped on his site, Murphy's Multiverse, about the WWE's, um, uh, that WWE, uh, what's her name, Shura Haas, or wh wh what's her name, uh, oh, Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins, sorry, <laughs> his name, Seth Rollins. He is in um, the movie. That was from the 16th of May. He is um, the Serpent Society, the main Serpent Society person, I believe. Um, yeah, I got to read some more. The Serpent Society is kind of all over the place, too. I'm really hoping that that Sinister, is, um, not Sinister, but Sister Sin or Sin is, is going to be showing up because she has a really long history with Steve Rogers and um, and uh, Sam Wilson uh, collectively. Um, at first, she was uh, she was Madam Hydra for a little bit. I think she was like Madam Viper. I think like her first was like two ninety. She's the daughter of Red School, and then she turns into Sin later in the modern comics, and she joins the sisters, uh, the Sin sisters, or something like that. It's just it's a really cool villain, especially for a female character. Uh, okay, so this is uh, Rachel Layton from the 616, uh, a.k.a. Diamondback. So this is the one, this is the character that Charles Murphy is claiming uh, is confirmed that the Alita um, actress, uh, the uh, what's her name, um, uh, whatever her name is, the Alita actress is playing. So this is who Charles Murphy is saying that is confirmed, okay? Take that with a grain of salt take it run to this ebay i don't care what you guys do this came from him all right all right so this is your first appearance of the serpent 
Society. This is uh, Amer- uh, Captain America 310. This is a 65 cent book. These uh, 60 uh, comics weren't 65 cents for very long, I don't think, um, until they went to 75. But there are Mark Jewelers. And if there's not a Mark Jewelers, it will be a National Diamonds um, insert available. All right, Holly Berry sparks X Men return speculation with new photo guys. All right, so let's get into this right now. I, I, I went bonkers when I saw this, guys. All right, so here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go ahead and share this tab. Check this out. So she tweeted. She tweets this, and I believe I don't know if she put it on her IG, but this is on the 24th. What's today's the 26th? Shout out to Razor Rob McCullough. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday, brother. I love you. And uh, we'll be catching up soon. Um, I believe he's 46, like me, too. Anyways, um, so she tweets this on the 24th and she puts Holly Berry, patience takes practice. Look at her hair, guys. Okay. There is no way Holly Berry is going to wear that hair ever ever unless a she's completely pulling our chains and and pulling a quick one on us or b something's going on with storm and Halle berry playing it um but let me go ahead and go over the article real quick so holly berry teasing x-men comeback former storm actress for the fox version of storm Holly Berry sparked speculation about a potential return to her X-Men role thanks to a new picture she posted to Twitter. Holding her cat in one arm, Berry boasts a layer of white hair as she gazes into the camera in a candid photo. Okay, that's kind of like pumping it up, right? Uh, (laughs) While it isn't an exact match to the hairstyle she used as Aura Monroe in four separate Fox X-Men movies, the similarity in color is too pertinent to ignore. Have to agree. This photo sparked conversation amongst fans on Twitter, hoping to see Barry make her MCU debut as the weather-based powerful mutant. Wow, that is so cool, man. That is so cool. So, I mean, take it with a grain of salt. I mean, come on, you know, we, it is definitely wishful thinking, you know, but it's like, man, if we can get Storm from the Fox characters and it's Holly Berry, man, man, I, I'll be pumped. I'll be pumped. Uh, hitting up the chat here, uh, Sith Rule, he says, nice, was in Arizona on Monday, that's literally land on fire, yeah, my sister lives in Vegas, uh, my dad's actually in Vegas at my nephew's uh, graduation, and then um, my niece's graduation, I think, is right after that for their master's degree, uh, South, uh, South Paul Brad laughed at that, uh, she is a- ageless, totally agree, thank you guys for joining me, I really appreciate it, it's a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of words, that people say, but when you guys actually show actions and you show your support, it means so much. It, it just takes me to a whole nother step and, and the way I want to treat you guys. It, it, it just, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right. Uh, Elizabeth Olsen, Olsen reacts to John Krasinski's rumored replacement for fantastic four movie. Okay. So, Basically, what's happening here is is that um, she's basically she's being professional and she's 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 not mad. She's not she's not happy. She's just, you know, kind of just going with it. She's kind of been in a rampage lately. I was going to tell you guys um, she's been in the news in and out talking about deleted scenes. I don't know what's going on with her, but she's doing a lot more talking than I've ever seen an mcu character like actor talk with all these ndas and stuff so i don't know if she's going to be hanging around very long i hope so i love her elizabeth olsen is she's one of my favorites um but yeah she's uh she well i'm looking for the article but uh honestly uh it's just basically um yeah she's just neither near nor there so it's not really that great. Let's get into something else. Elizabeth Olsen learns about Krasinski's rumored replacement and then goes Marvel Studios hits pause on Wonder Man. So these two were connected and this was the third part of the article. So I'm going to read this. This is very important. So check this out, guys. So Marvel Studios hits pause on Wonder Man and Thunderbolt series. This has dropped last night at 
11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Due to the ongoing writer strike, Marvel Studios has hit pause on the filming for both Thunderbolts and Wonder Man, and this is confirmed. As the writer strike continues, Hollywood is being forced to hit pause on upcoming projects. Two of the most recent projects in Impacted by the strike are Marvel Studios, Wonder Man, and Thunderbolts, with the former having already begun production and the latter having been readied for a June start. Wonder Man and Thunderbolts uh, Bolts join Blade as Marvel Studios projects now on hold indefinitely. Wonder Man has no official release window as of yet, but Thunderbolts and Blade are tentatively slated for... Uh, like midsummer 2024 they have a soft date of july 26 2024 and september 6 2024 but take that with a grain of salt i i say that's very tentative i would say probably you know just say after summer and then into thanksgiving probably but who, who knows maybe this writer strike will be over and it'll get back to it but let me go ahead and continue it would seem that it sound the strike continued through the summer and perhaps Beyond that meeting, those release dates would begin to become unrealistic for Marvel Studios due to this writer strike and so many projects being pushed back. As it currently stands, productions for Agatha, Coven of Chaos, D Plus series, Captain America 4, Daredevil, Born Again, and the third Deadpool film are still up and running. While principal photography on Catherine Hahn's Agatha Harkness spinoff is coming to a close, the Deadpool and Wolverine team up is just getting underway in the UK. It's unknown how the strike might impact additional photography and or reshoot shoots, which are built in part of every Marvel Studios, a.k.a. MCU production. Um, so, yeah, we covered that on what was it? It was like Mystery Box Monday, Hump Day Heroes or something. But remember, oh, hey, what's up, Ronnie? Um Thank you. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Uh, remember, we we talked about that, right? So um, we talked about the 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 Deadpool three movie is now on a working title called Tidal Wave, and that is the new subtitle. It's not set in stone, but they're working off that. The source material that Tidal Wave connects to is that uh, is that Tidal Wave. Um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Magneto uh, uh, run. I think it was like 2008 to 2010, I believe. But uh, yeah, I mean, um, so there's probably going to be really good source material in that area. I'm already dot connecting and I'm going to be sifting out those books. So we'll do a segment on MCM probably tomorrow or next week. And I'll give you guys the books if you guys are interested in that. Okay. All right. This one's cool, man. I'm really glad we got into this one. So, um, the Rings of Power Star and talks for multiple Marvel roles. Oh, baby. Here we go. One of Rings of Power act actor revealed that he is in contact with Marvel Studios daily about multiple potential roles, in particular one. As the MCU evolves in the multiverse saga, Marvel Studios has been reaching out to several notable actors to expand its roster of heroes and villains. The Mandalorian and Breaking Bad actor John Carlo Esposito confirmed that he had talks with Marvel Studios about taking a role in the Loki series, but decided to hold out for a film role instead. Kingsman star Ter Taron Egerton, who I thought it was going to be Wolverine, but anyways, also shared that he met with Marvel Studios recently, including their executives, but he didn't specify if he's up for a role or if he even wants to do one within the MCU. Meanwhile, Thomas Hayden Church, who returned as Sandman in Spider-Man No Way Home, pointed out that he had talks with Marvel Studios about the possibility of the villain returning in the future. Honestly, I could do without Sandman, guys, but I mean, if you're sitting on those books... I hope he comes for you. Rings of Power actor reveals Marvel talks. All right. So speaking with Variety. So this is from a trade, guys. This is not from a scooper site. This is from a trade. This is actually from like a legitimate source, news source. Variety. Rings of Power actor Ismael Cruz Cordova shared that he has a, quote, very good relationship, end quote, with Marvel Studios casting directors and executives collectively and respectively. Noting that Marvel Studios already reached out to him multiple times about different projects. 
Interestingly, Cordova confirmed that he was in the running to play Adam Warlock in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, but Will Poulter landed the role instead. He went on and said, quote, I really wanted that one, but Will looks amazing doing it, so I'm not mad. Talking about Adam Warlock in, in Volume 3. Continuing, but that was a hard one because I love that whole storyline, end quote. Oh, I love that. So he reads the comics. He reads the source material. Let's get into this. In Prime Video's Rings of Power, the 36-year-old Puerto Rican actor portrays Sylvan F. Uh, Sil Sylvan F. Aronder. I Sorry, I'm not a, I'm not a um, Hobbit uh, uh, Lord of the Rings guy. I apologize. I want to get into it, but I just haven't had time. The actor's other roles include The Mandalorian, The Undoing, and Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. Now, who will Ismael Cruz Cordova play in the MCU? The fact that Ismael Cruz Cordova is in talks for different roles in the MCU and the multiple phases forthwith suggests that the actor's immense talent has caught the eye of the MCU and its executives collectively. It remains to be seen which character the Rings of Power, the Rings of Power actor will portray in the ever-expanding MCU, but it's possible that Cordova could end up portraying one of the members of the X-Men in the MCU or a cosmic character like Silver Surfer, since he has already he was already in the running for Adam Warlock in Volume Three of Guardians of the Galaxy. While his age, a, a ripe thirty six years old, is not ideal for someone like Miles Morales, Cordova previously told Yahoo in September of twenty twenty two that his dream Marvel role is to portray Hector Ayala, aka White Tiger, pointing out that he loves quote characters that are improbable heroes end quote love this guy. He went on and alluded to that and said quote I love characters that are improbable heroes that are that are people that have got the worst deck dealt dealt. That is my story. And I find that it is many of our stories and life is not just this little journey of redemption. How many of us were bullied? How many of us were poor? How many of us are castaways or were castaways? How many of our ideas or I'm sorry, of our identities were something that you couldn't be. A lot of us got cards that were a bad deck End quote. Wow. That's deep, man. Well said. In Marvel Comics, Hector Ayala is the first White Tiger, as you guys know, before passing on the moniker to his daughter, Ava. The character's powers include feline-like abilities, uh, blah, 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 blah. All right. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. But here's, here's my guy right here, right? This is who I'm thinking right here, baby. And now... I mean, it's just a coincidence that he's African-American and, and Latin, okay? It's just a coincidence. But honestly, when I think of Donald Brugier, I think of that guy's face. I think of, of, of his face, his eyes. Like, that's what I think with, like, a salt and pepper beard. Like, that's what I think of, of, of Brugier. Uh, Donald Brugier. Adam Brugier. <laughs> Donald Brugier. He used to be a goon for the... Uh, vancouver canucks but anyways yeah for adam brazier so this is your first appearance of adam brazier blue marvel uh comic cron has this book uh, ordered by retailers uh you know diamond solicits pre-foc uh just under 20k but if you guys were watching um uh what was it uh, the wednesday show the flagship show wednesday review on uh, brian mcclay's channel beyond wednesdays we had some really experienced in season uh, retailers and uh, they told you uh they had a pretty much pretty much same or parallel um opinion about comicron so yeah i'm glad we 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 use it as a guesstimation and those worst case scenario numbers you know that three to five thousand pad we put on there that's that's good that's good so all right so um this is an interesting book as well uh, this is a pretty cool cover appearance and um there is a really interesting connection here and you and you guys will see here in a sec but with all these new Avengers coming out, or not a new Avengers, young Avengers coming out and stuff, right? So going into this right here, hang on, sorry, I'm trying to pull this up, trying to pull this up, sorry, to pull this up, Marvel, I know it's just went off screen. Okay, so um, basically what this is right here is, is this is your first team appearance of Power Man, White Tiger, and Blue Marvel as they join the mighty Avengers. 
So interesting enough, we're talking about a guy who who might be playing in, might be casted as White Tiger, and then this book comes up. I just pop it up. I I can't believe it, man. I didn't even read all that article, and here you go. You have a team appearance of White Tiger, Blue Marvel, and Power Man Alvarez joining the Mighty Avengers. Go if we keep going into that now. Now let's go back and what I was saying because I kind of skipped ahead about the Young Avengers stuff. So here you go. This is what I was talking about right here. If you're like, what is this guy talking about? So this is Mighty Avengers 8. This is from the 2014 series. Your first appearance of uh, Dr. Pigeron, a.k.a. Max Brigier, the son of the Blue Marvel. First cameo appearance of Kevin Brigier, the Blue Marvel's eldest son. So two sons are in this book. This is a cameo right here, okay? Um, that's what... That's what a lot of people are saying. I, I mean, a fandom, I believe, has it as a cameo. Let's get into this one right here. This is your first full appearance. First full appearance of uh, Dr. Uh, Pazishron, a.k.a. Max Bergier, the son of Blue Marvel. And then your also your uh, first full appearance of Kevin Bergier, the Blue Marvel's eldest son. Uh, these are 50 cent to a dollar books, guys. Um it's just good to have these, but you want eight and nine. And then I would probably grab that just for the cover art. But yeah, that's uh, these are like 50 cent books, guys. I mean, you cannot lose and you got some pretty solid first appearances. I mean, they're definitely CDF characters, but I mean, it only takes one rumor or one confirmation and boom. All right, so uh, let's get back into it. So we have the Ultimates one, guys. This is from January of 2016. This book was actually released, I think, um, around Thanksgiving of 2015, but the pull off the shelf date is is uh, in 2016. But you have a pretty nice key issue. Shout out to Monty Mel V. Um, him and and I were we've been specking on Io and Anika for a long time. But anyways, we have the first team appearance of the Ultimates, and this version. Uh, are, is uh, Captain Marvel, Black Panther, Miss America, Chavez, Spectrum, and Blue Marvel, Adam Brashear. First appearance of Io, of course, member of Dora Milaje, who's Anika's better half. And then I also threw this one in here. I mean, this is another 25 cent, doll, 25 cent book. It's not really a big key, but it's the first team appearance of Avengers World. It's a, basically, a, it's the first time, I believe, in the 616 that, um, that Brashear, Blue Marvel, actually is leading the Avengers. So... Um, in the 616, he leaves the Avengers in the in, in the Ultimate Universe, which is 1610, and then I believe in another universe, but I don't think he does in 616. So just uh, want to let you guys know. All right. Uh, Amazon Spider-Verse live action TV show Silk, Spider-Man, and War Origin series. Development has paused on a number of features too. So let me go ahead. It kind of sounds like convoluted of what I had there. Um Let's go ahead and, and and get into this right here. So basically what they're saying is this is from the Hollywood Reporter, and this is from the 25th. So this is from yesterday. It's 1230 in the morning, and Phil Lord and Chris Miller are sure that something is wrong. They're just two and a half weeks out from Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, a.k.a. Into the Spider-Verse 2, hitting theaters, and they're holed up on a mixing stage at Sony Pictures Animation in Culver City, which is about 34, 35 minutes from me with light traffic. It's about 27 miles uh, north. They are nearing the end of, a, of the five-year marathon of making this follow-up to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Sony Animation film. And now, after so many challenges, six different animation styles, years of rewrites, with every change creating ripple effects that can mean weeks of more work for animators, it's the sound of a watch that is bugging them. A character presses a button on, on, a, on the watch and hears an error sound, a very minor moment in the hugely complex world of the Spider-Verse, but Lord and Miller can't move past it. They try version after version from serious to comical. Finally, they land on a sound that can't, that can't be described, but they both felt it. It works. They went on and said, quote, there are a lot of silly things that matter in this movie. Lord 47 says, especially of the late nights that they've been pulling. So going back into this, um, they're basically saying that, uh, let's see here. So Silk is confirmed, okay? 
the Spider-Man and War. It's not a Spider-Man. Okay, according to this, this is from the Hollywood Report. It's not a Spider-Man and War movie. It's an origin, so it's probably gonna be like it's like an origin story of Spider-Man and War. So it's probably gonna be some kind of like spinoff. I'm guessing. Um, but we're going to talk about that in a second, but anyways, uh, so yeah, so they're saying that right now, where is it at right here? Silk and the Spider-Man and war spinoff series with Sony pictures is on hold for now. So yeah, so we haven't heard anything about silk for a long time, but yeah, this just came out of the Hollywood reporter. At least we're hearing something and it's happening. Um, Amazon owns, I believe MGM plus now, which used to be epics. And I think silk's going to show up there. I don't know where the Spider-Man and war one is, but that's interesting. So here is, let's get back into Spider-Man and war. This is Spider-Man and war. This is uh issue number one from 2008. This is cover a, this is first appearance, first cover. This is the variant, which I think is super underpriced. I mean, it's like half the price. I mean, I don't know now. I haven't checked lately, but uh, I know when in 2021, when prices were pretty decent, this was about, no, I wouldn't say half, or I'd say probably about, I don't know, uh, maybe 25% less than cover A. And I really like this one. Also in the way that the printer printed this, uh, um, the Spider-Man and War on the cover, it almost has this like reddish kind of like, I don't know. It's like, you know, how printers like mix up colors and stuff. It has this reddish tint. And I remember my, the first two copies I got, I was like, Oh my God, these are damaged. And I almost went in with my eraser to clean it, but I'm like, Oh wait, that's the, that's the art. That's the effect. So anyways. Yeah. And then there's also new stand editions. Very rare, hard to find. This is Spider-Man and War number one. This is uh, from the two, th I believe this is from the 2019 series. This is the one in 50. This is Spider-Man and War number two. These are low print run books. There's a misconception in this book. It's a it's a it's a D C D E F level character, but there is a character from the Dora Milaje that shows up in here. Her name is Huri, but she doesn't show up in this book. She shows up in issue four. Her alter ego is actually um, is uh, Harry Charles. A pilot. She's a one. It's a woman, but the it, it, I, I believe she's she's trying to disguise as a man. I, I think, or maybe just uh, non-binary. I guess. Uh, I guess that's how you put it. But yeah. So so she he's um, Huri, who's Henry Charles, um, is a pilot, and it's just like a. It's kind of like a uh, like a. Um, I don't know. Just flying. Uh, it's, Spider-Man and War around, and they're going through the multiverse, Spider-Verse, and they're killing Nazis, and all, all this crazy stuff is happening. Well, then when you get into, oh, this is the one in 25. I love this book, too. And then this is the one in 25 for issue three. Love that book. You get into this one, issue four. This is when um, Charles, uh, it's either Harry Charles or Henry Charles. I can't remember, but uh, the Ultra Eagle comes through, and that's when you get to first appearance of Huri. That's H U R I. And I think it's like Earth 87. I want to say like 80, 77. Oh, I don't know. I can't remember, but uh, yeah, I got it down. Low program books, guys. There's not a lot of these out there. Now, I like this cover a lot. This cover was on the Hot 10 twice when I first joined in 2020. Um, I like this cover a lot and it's amazing that Marvel with that, with the flash from the guns, the flash, uh, the muzzle flash that they put that on there. So bright. I would really like this cover. Uh, here is, we were talking about silk. So here's a couple of books. I think that are um, way down. Like we saw, we say by the dip, you know, uh, this is silk. Number one, this is the second print. Um, I love the blue on there. It, I really like silk with red and yellow, but, and white as well like you know but this blue looks really good i like it here is a really cool beautiful variant with silk i believe this is an incentive variant let me go ahead and and get this out here i have it right here okay so i don't own this book I, most of these books i don't own but these are books i i honestly guys i'm not the kind of person that goes well you're you're an idiot because you did, you told everybody to buy it Dude, I have so many books. I've 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 flipped so many books. I've I've 
bought, invested. I've lost. I have a ton of books that I totally kicked dust on. I've had a lot of books that I've scored big on. And I'd rather just talk about this stuff than go out and buy it. So I don't own pretty much all these books, but I just want you guys to know these are out there. That's why I'm putting them out there. Okay. All right. So let's go back in this. So Silk, this is, uh, let's see here. Sorry, guys. Pulling it up, pulling it up, pulling it up. Uh, not the first appearance, as you guys know. The first appearance is in uh, Amazing Spider-Man number one, a cameo, I believe, of her leg or something. And then there's also um, a couple cameos through two and three where she's like messing around with her Spidey powers. Issue four of that 2014 series with the original Sin on the cover. That's her first full appearance. She's on the cover of the one in ten, but you can't really tell because she's it's kind of like a, you know, like uh, the the way that I think it Ramos did that cover, right? The way that he wound the web around her is kind of hard to tell. Um, I know a lot of people are saying ASM five or second parents and first cover appearance. No, nah, it's not her first cover. Her first cover is actually on four and the one in 10, but uh, yeah, she is, uh, she is on the ASM five, but uh, yeah, let's get into this variant real quick here. I'm pulling it up, pulling it up. Okay. So this is the one in 25 Stacy Lee. Wow. I, I can't believe it's not showing up. I must've like, I must have put black on black. Yeah, Stacy Lee. That's what I thought. So when I saw this, I was like, wow, I, I, either I haven't seen this or I don't remember. And that would be because this is right when I got back into comics. So I was buying and I was trying to buy every variant. Like, you know, I was an idiot. What's up, Mac? Thank you for joining. I appreciate it. Uh, Blood Sausage, Mac Tyson. He says, yo, what's up, good peeps? Thank you very much. All right, let's move on. Uh, these books are down guys, way down these books in 2020 and 2020. Well, let's not say 2020, these books in 2021, I'm talking like into like through summer going into Halloween, Thanksgiving, these books were two, three, four times what they're selling for now. So, so it's great time to buy, um, you can get a really good deal. But anyways, I like this book right here this uh this 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 silk variant um this is what silk let's check it out here i have it written down fortunately i don't have my notes here but uh let's see here if you guys in the live chat you want to chime in you're more than welcome to um i do not own this book so i'm kind of a clown in that aspect but uh let me pull up the variant list for silk i had it right here Silk. okay where do i got what do i got all right 2015 okay so this is the w scott forbes one in 25 wow i really like that really really like that i want that book so i'm gonna be hunting that book and i know we can get it for a good a good price i guarantee you it's tough um tough and high grade tough to find i mean a second issue of a of silk in 2015 one in 25 when they were doing one in 15s and one in 20s then i mean it's tough to find tough and high grade with all that yellow so put that one on your list that's uh what's his name w scott forbes one in 25 for silk two this is one i i had four copies of this at one time now i own none and i'm so mad and i sold them all raw between 75 and like 125 and i got them all for like really cheap but anyways this is silk number seven this is the manga variant okay this is not an incentive guys this is a guri high row cover this is a retailer unlock variant or speculators like to call them speculator content creators call it percentile qualifiers that's a spec term <laughs> so comic shops qualified to order this variant after matching the quantities of copies ordered for silk number four open to order covers so however you want to uh, chop that up and try to dissect it there's just not a lot of these out there and they're tough and high grade i don't know why i mean that the, the colors the colors aren't so bad but every single one i had i had to press the shit out of it lucky i had no color breakers but yeah all right here is silk number three let me see here i have this one right here where's he at where's he at? okay this is uh number three okay so this is the j scott campbell one in 25 i knew it was campbell but i just didn't know if it was a 125 or 120 uh from march 2016 um yeah i mean this was a 60 to 100 dollar book like for a long time i mean 
check eBay. I mean, I, I check, check Mercari, check Amazon, check your stores. I mean, if you go to the store, it's probably going to be on the wall unless you have a half price books or something like that. But um, yeah, I mean, you, I've seen people are just making stupid, stupid decisions on eBay selling stuff. I mean, I, I had to take a couple, couple hits recently on a couple books that I mistakenly signed up for an auction. I should have never done that, but I don't know. I was just trying to like, trying to like, you know, give my store variety, have like, you know, a category for 10 day auction starting in seven day auctions or whatever. Well, I took some hits, uh, but I'm not making dumb decisions. That was just a, that was more like a bonehead move. I could have done better. People are desperate right now and you guys can get some really, really good deals. But unfortunately there are a few of the people are tanking their books. So, and cards as well, but that's a whole nother situation. I do not like these stupid cosplay covers, but this cosplay cover rocks. This is so phenomenal. I love this. This is the Silk number 12. This is the cosplay uh, edition variant. It's a 1 in 15. Very cool. Very cool. And then, of course, to round it out, we have Silk number 14. This is the 1 in 25 Todd Knock from, and I believe this is the last issue, too. This is like a big book. This book was like almost 350, three, nah, 250 to 350 at one time raw. But uh, I wonder, check, guys, check the secondary market. See if you can get this for 100 or under. I am telling you, great time. Of course, you know this one. This is uh, this came out recently. I believe this is the one in one hundred for Silk Number One. I like this one. This is for Silk Number One, but this is the second print, one in twenty five. I like this one a lot. No, it's not Momoko. We all know this one is how Besh kind of like just. I mean, she was always here, but this is kind of how she got really big. This is the Silk Two Rose Besh one in twenty five. This book bottom out, totally tanked. Love this book. I think it has mass, mass profit margin upside, especially if she shows up and she's wearing like J's or any of this. I mean, these books would just love this book. The red with the red in the eyes. I believe this is, is this Frizen or Bartel guys? I can't remember, but uh, this is also a one in 25 for issue four. Um, love 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 this cover the the reds just go so well and with the red in her eyes makes it better when her upside down i love it of course this one it's hit or miss i like it i think it's really good it just gives me kind of a manga feel manga variant but it's not a manga variant this is a one in 25 as well for silk five love it it's also very cheap and it also was on the hot 10 it was a very expensive book it was like 50 plus you know it's super cheap all right, we're going to get into this. Thank you, uh, Enviro Earth, for joining. I appreciate you. I really appreciate you. Okay, so we're going to get into this because I know you guys have been seeing my thumbnail going, what the hell is he talking about, man? He's making shit up. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's. this is where I, we're going with this. We're just going to have fun because it's first appearance Friday, and it is confirmed. Robert Downey Jr., was in talks with the Fantastic Four MCU for Doctor Doom in 2008. <laughs> so before Tony Stark, but it was 2008. But yeah, he was the number one role. He was the, the lead go-getter for Victor Von Doom. And um, he ended up being taking the Tony Stark role. Well, there are so many connections with Victor Von Doom and, and Tony Stark in the comics. And let's get into this right now, guys. So here you go. You have the first appearance and origin of Dr. Doom. Of course, this is Fantastic Four or Five. Um, and let me go back. That's kind of the splash page. It says Fantastic Four and Prisoners of Dr. Doom. The Fantastic Four. I love that. I don't like how he's drawn right there, but it's pretty cool. All right. So this is uh, Fantastic Four issue number six is your... Second appearance of Doctor Doom, second appearance of the of Namor the Submariner in the Silver Age, and it's also your first team up of two supervillains in the Marvel Universe, Doctor Doom and Submariner. But I wouldn't really call him a villain; he's more like a antihero, right? I don't know. 
Uh, this is FF or AKA Fantastic Four 10, third appearance of Dr. Doom. He's also on the cover. Jack Kirby is confronted by Dr. Doom, who demands he lure Reed Richards into a trap. So, I, um, yeah, so you see the, you, can you see on the bottom that's like Stan Lee? And then there's like Jack Kirby. They're like talking to each other. It's kind of like a, a Scotty Young variant, right? <laughs> uh hey what up john uh i was dude i was just thinking about you i was like man i hope he stops by i i need to call you we need to talk i want to i got some ideas thank you for joining guys i don't care if you have kids especially and you want to get them into comics you need to sub the, the john's comics with kids youtube channel i he's one of the first youtube channels i started watch when i got back into comics uh he was small then he wasn't even he he had any, I mean, he, he only had like a few hundred subscribers. I believe Comic Core would just like jumped on the scene and he was like the main guy or whatever. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, he's from my area. He does, he does comic unboxings, hauls, speculation once in a while. Saturdays, he does kids stuff. Awesome. Thank you, John, for joining. South Paul Brad says, I think he made the right choice. All right. I agree. Uh, Rad Hope. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ronnie said, Richie going on drama alert. I was so excited. I was so excited thinking your thumbnail was real. Uh, girl. Um, it is real, bro. I don't know what that means, but it is real. It is real. Um, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta stick around and see where we go with it. John's comments. The kid says, thanks buddy. We will be chatting about Ted Lasso and framing comic memorabilia Saturday morning. Wolves one fan. Thank you. What up dollar? Love your new channel. You always got good info. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much for joining and awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That means a lot. Thank you. Um, all right. So, uh, let's get back into this fantastic Four Ten. Uh, we went over this. That's uh, this is, this is on my list. This is a, a book I've always wanted just for the mere fact that it's an early it's an early key appearance of Dr. Doom. He's on the cover. And on top of that, you got uh, um, Stanley and Kirby over there going back and forth. So I think that's so cool. This is uh, uh, Fantastic Four 16. This is the fourth appearance, early appearance of Dr. Doom. Third appearance of the Wasp. First appearance of Ant-Man outside of the Tales to Astonish title. Love this cover, classic cover art. I mean, if this book ever popped, I mean, I, I, it's it, it's a couple bumps on the on the secondary market from becoming iconic. That 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 cover is just unbelievable. It's not iconic, but I could see it one day being iconic. Uh, here is another early appearance of Doom. I believe this is the fifth appearance. This is ASM number. Is it ASM annual number five? I can't remember. Maybe it's just ASM five. Yeah, it's ASM five because it's 12 cent. First battle of Spider-Man versus Dr. Doom. Also his first, fifth full appearance. This one is a sleeper. I think, in my opinion, this is a Fantastic Four annual number two. You have a really deep and, and, and good origin story, backstory of Victor Von Doom, a.k.a. Dr. Doom. You also get the first appearance of Boris, who's a... It's like a confidant and ally of Dr. Doom. And uh, it's also um, uh, Boris is the father of uh, Victor Von Dude's ex-girlfriend when he was younger. Um, also, you get a battle. It's a classic battle, not a first battle, but classic battle of Dr. Doom versus Rama Tut. That's pretty cool. Uh, classic cover art right here. This is a cheap book. I don't even think it's a key. I mean, I, I guess it is because it's artistically classic cover. So I guess it is a key. But um, yeah, I mean, that is a sick Doom cover. I mean, you could probably get a nice mid, mid, like 6 0 and have like me or Joe or, or Big Leg work on it and get you a nice, like 7 5 on there for a really good deal. I think if Doom ever comes, this thing will pop. Uh, this is Avengers number 25. This is also a 12 cent Silver Age issue. Enter Dr. Doom. First battle of the Avengers versus Dr. Doom. Very interesting. I wonder if this is the first appearance of Dr. Doom in the Avengers title. Do you guys know in the chat? Let me know. That's a probably, I just thought of that. That's, that's probably a good question. Uh, this book all of a sudden has, this cover has all, all of a sudden become iconic for some reason. Um, I mean, it is well known, but I just feel like it just became iconic over the last like, like four years because it was always just like a classic. Uh, what is it, a Dicko Kirby cover? Kirby, 
is Dicko on this one as well. But um, there's just always just been like a, a classic Dune cover, and it was always like mid grade copies were around 50, 60 bucks. Now this book is super expensive, and people are calling it iconic. So, uh, this cover, classic cover art. Um, I don't know what's in the guts because I don't own this book, but I'm definitely looking for it. This is Daredevil number 37. Don't look now, but it's Dr. Doom. Classic cover art. Love it. This is uh, Daredevil 38. I had to put this on here as well. Definitely going to be hunting this. Do not own it. Look at that Doom cover. So sick. Man, there are so many good Doom covers. This is Fantastic 484. This is another unbelievable Doom cover. Uh, this is Marvel Super Heroes number 20. This is your, I believe this is your first solo titled or first solo titled our first solo series. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but I know this is the first series with Dr. Doom on it. So, I mean, even though it's called Marvel superheroes number 20, but he he's titled on there. So I don't know. I don't know how it works, but anyways, Marvel superheroes number 20. I really like this cover classic cover art. Very cool. This is a uh, fantastic Four, the, the uh, King size special number seven. Um, very cool. They're all fighting doom right there. Pretty awesome. Uh, this is uh, Prince Name on the Submariner. This is issue number 20. Another Doom cover. Uh, these are all cheap Doom covers, guys. I really think, I mean, like I said, it's a really good time to buy. So get on those big keys and stuff that you couldn't afford first. But I mean, if you really want dirt cheap, back issue vintage, like silver and, and early bronze age, the Doom covers are the way to go. Silver Surfer covers, Galactus cover, way to go, way to go. It, you cannot lose on those, in my opinion. The market was not going to be like this forever. And you guys know once news is confirmed and it's out there, these things bump. And once first appearances get out of reach, we go to second appearances, the origins, then we start going to cover art. And then we start going to iconic classic cover, first battle. And then we go into modern age, first, you know, we want to be, we want to stay three steps ahead of everybody. So get those keys right now because the market's on a dip, but you got a little extra scratch. This is a nice one. This is Thor number 183. Okay, this is Astonishing Tales number six. This is their first appearance of Bobby Morse, unnamed, um, but, you know, it's Mockingbird. Battle of Black Panther versus Doctor Doom. Very cool. Look at T'Challa. I love that cover. Look at uh, Victor's eyes. It's so sick. Almost done here, and we're, we're almost done with this this stream as well. But thank you guys for joining. Uh, this is Submariner 47. This is the second series. No, it's I believe it's the first series, but it's into the Bronze Age. So it's 47, uh, Doom versus uh, Namor. They're, all, they're uh, doing a little bit of hot oil jujitsu. This book is hilarious. I had to freaking tell you guys about this if you didn't know. I know a lot of you guys already know about this, but this is uh, Hero for Hire number nine, guys. This book is so cool. This is when Dr. Doom show uh, fights freaking Luke Cage, the hero for hire, dude. I, this is insane. I, I had no idea that this even existed and I own every single hero for hire first volume. I, I just never noticed it. I guess. I don't know. It, it's so many different things, but now I am just, I'm in awe of this book and I don't, my copy's a beater. I need a high grade, this is so cool, man. Dogger Doom fighting Luke Cage. It's hilarious. Look at, and he's like trying to rationalize with them. Yeah. A uh, series that teams up Dr. Doom and Submariner. This is super villain team up, I believe number one, or is it just super villain? Yeah. Super villain team up. Number one. Wow. Look at that cover. That's cool. Mid bronze age, 25 cent. Cut. Well, it is a, yeah. Mid bronze age. All right, so this was important. That's why I put this on here. It's not really a key issue, but it's Doom Quest, the first part of Doom Quest. It's a two, it's a two issue story arc miniseries established that Doctor Doom as a major foe of Iron Man Tony Stark, and also one who has many formidable similarities to Tony Stark. Okay, now let's, let's get into this. And then this is the second part battle of Iron Man versus Doctor Doom. This is an iconic John uh, Romita Jr. cover. That's uh, Iron Man, I think, 150. Um, this is uh, like some cheap 50 cent stuff. First appearances, Doom covers. This thing is classic cover art. Of course, this one, this is uh, somebody on Flipside was calling it iconic. I was like, no, 
Could be one day, though. Is this issue 10? Another Doom cover. All right. Now, here we go. Let's get into goods. Now, this is Secret, Secret Wars number two. This is your first appearance of Doom as God Emperor Doom, a powerful alternate reality version of Dr. Doom. I believe it's 1610. I believe it's 1610 or 1610. Also, you get the first Bar Sinister. Now, this is the Ribic. Really like it. It's got Captain Britain on there, Mr. Sinister. It's got Thor. Very cool. Very cool. It's got Old Man. It's got, um, what's his name? Old King Thor on there. This is this, I believe this is a second print. No text. There's a third print. I don't like that. Uh, this is for a uh, issue two as well. I believe this is the Chung cover, connecting cover. I, I can't remember. There's so many covers. Okay, so God Emperor Doom uh, first appears in issue two. Um, he's on the cover of one, but he, we don't know. He's not God Emperor Doom. He's just Doom, in my opinion. Then he's like consoling um, uh, this character. And then here is uh, him on his, his, you know, his, his throne on Secret four, Wars number four. And then here's the second print with the no text. And this is five. I really like this one um, because it has the four different phases of, of Doom. So it has Doom, and then it has him turning into God Emperor Doom. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, first appearance of Heinzman and, and Alien. First appearance of Cormorant. This is uh, Fantastic Four 25. This is a one in one. I think it's a one in 100, maybe one in 200. But I think it's a one in 100 Stanley Art Germ version. And uh, reminds me of God Emperor Doom. Doesn't say, but it's like it. Beyonder Secret Wars one. You guys know. Okay, so here is your first physical Beyonder. Okay, just keep this stuff in mind. I'm just kind of brushing through it. Don't worry, we're gonna get there. More Doom covers. More Doom covers. Okay, here's your first solo series, actual official solo series of Doctor Doom. Or no, maybe it's not first solo. I don't know if it's first solo, guys. Let me know in the chat. But uh, this is a 2019 series, but there's a second print right here I really like a lot, and it was in the Walmart three packs, and it was a hundred dollar book at one time. Now you can get it for like eight bucks. Um, but here, this is what I wanted to tell you. So this is what I wanted to tell you. So that's why I was showing you that Iron Man number 50, the two part series with how Victor Von Doom finds out that Tony Stark and him are have so many like uh, so many uh, similar traits. They their lives run parallel almost well right there that says secret war zero free comic book day who is that right there in that suit that's iron doom right that's victor von doom as as uh as iron man right isn't that his suit it looks gosh darn it looks really similar so if that's the case your first cover if that really is iron doom or victor von doom as iron man in infamous iron man one especially the ribic is not the first cover appearance it would be this free comic book day version this came out a few months before here is a midtown exclusive of the same cover here is infamous Iron Man number one, your first appearance in the guts, and then also on the cover of Victor Von Doom as Iron Man, aka Iron Doom. Also, um, you also get your first appearance in Partial Origin of the AI Tony Stark in this as well. I read this again for the like fifth time. Love it, great story. I actually had the guts all. I put content together. I was gonna, we we're gonna go over the story, but I was like, man, this is way too much for these guys. I'm gonna blow these guys' mind. Uh, there he is. So right here, guys. So that is him. That is Victor Von Doom in his iron suit. Okay, all right, guys. Now. Isn't that the same character? That's the same character, right? Same suit. Looks like it to me. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm I'm high. Uh, there's second print as well. This is the uh, um, who is this? Is this the uh, what's his name? Uh, Mike uh, Mayhew, I believe, or I think it's just an open order. Maybe it could be a one in ten. Who knows? But that's Victor Von Doom right there with the Iron Man helmet. That's not Tony Stark. Infamous Iron Man number one. This is the Scotty Young super tough book in high grade. Good luck. 
so black. And I believe this was a unlock a uh, retailer unlock, aka percentile qualifier. I don't think it was open to order, but I could be wrong, but I doubt it. Very cool. Here is the hip hop variant. Uh, look at all the mark suits are uh are like polishing uh um long live von doom infamous iron man that's so cool with the hip hop area and here's the beast the beast this book just not does not lose its mojo i mean we are in a we're in the the we're at the bottom of the ocean in in uh fmv dip on our comics and this thing is still raw it's like 100 plus 100 200 plus in high grade 9 8 300 250 to 400 i mean it's crazy people are crazy about this cover it's insane but this is the esod ribic incentive cover love it shout out to uh sanctum sanctorium they had one for sale recently i grabbed it it was like 69 bucks or whatever but uh hopefully it's good i'm gonna press it send it to cjc i'm gonna keep it in my pc not selling it all right so i put this one in here this is a what if iron man demon in an armor number one this is your first appearance of not in continuity but the first appearance of if Tony Stark was Dr. Doom, I believe. I think that's how it works. So let me let me check that again. So it, I, it's what if, what if Iron Man? What did I what did I say? Demon in an armor. Okay. Let's check this out. I I I didn't know about this. I hadn't wasn't around probably when everybody was arguing about it in 2015 or 16, but uh, I was into girls and sports and stuff but so this is your first and only known appearance of tony stark slash dr victor von doom so this is a little interesting book here look at this what if iron man demon in an armor instead of demon in the bottle number one this is a floppy it's not a it's not a it's not some prestige book uh children's hardcover book that i'm trying to say it's you know prestige where no it's it's a comic book it's a floppy um Howard Stark is um, a different version. I believe that I believe the uh, reality is like Earth. It's like it's like one ten seven nine, maybe one ten two nine, one ten two nine. Earth one ten two nine. Yeah. So pretty cool, right? So I thought that was pretty cool. Everybody's all you know, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Here he is, right here. <laughs> I think that's so cool. It's so funny. Kind of like Jack Kirby ish drawing make sure you use popcorn 99 and uh, you'll get 10 percent off your next gemini order i really appreciate you guys uh, i'm gonna hit the chat one more time and then i gotta see if we're gonna do hot 10 tonight i'm not sure we're it's not looking too good because uh ben ben had to go to the hospital he, he's got some issues i don't know if it, he had the issues or somebody close to him but he had to go to the hospital so make sure you guys prayers up for ben stein he's my bro he's one of my best friends i look up to the guy and he's just a good dude he's a good overall dude and uh i hope he's okay so we don't know if we're gonna do the hot 10 tonight but we'll let you know me and brian are trying to salvage some by the dip in almost 10 but we'll see we'll see if he's doing okay just uh stay tuned Con john's comments kid says thanks buddy we will be chatting oh yeah, yeah we talked about that okay cool 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 i'm i'm glad um ronnie says uh, i meant current times gotcha gotcha yeah i know i know i just like giving you a hard time uh <laughs> i have been grabbing the annual number two. Oh, okay smart smart oh thank you brad i appreciate that brad uh i need to get with you after i need to talk to you about something i'll dm you on ig i love all these old ff yeah yeah you know it's kind of like refreshing to talk about these doom the, the ff books right i mean we all know about them and stuff and probably own a lot of them but it's just like i mean i don't but um it's fun to talk about it rather than just like you know spec on uh foc stuff and you come i mean i love doing that but i get burned out sometimes you know uh yeah yeah for sure for sure for sure uh brad selden what up man what up man uh what i miss south paul brad so many great doom covers i love the iron man where doom is reflected in his helmet Brad, what, what'd you miss? Where were you at? Furbird the Nerds channel? <laughs> uh, what's up? What's up? What's up? All right, cool. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it, guys. I'd love to do like an unboxing or 
or something, but uh, I don't have much for you. I hope you enjoyed the show. It's kind of my consolation prize for not having the hot 10 tonight. I, I wasn't going to do this today. I was just going to do, I was going to cut it in half and have a segment on MCM. But when Ben said that he was hurting and we're, and we're it was unlikely or a possibility we won't do it. I decided to put this out there. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, people are subscribing and they're unsubscribing. I don't know if they're doing that on purpose, but uh, it, I know one person it, did it on purpose and it didn't make me mad. I actually thought it was kind of funny, but uh, yeah. So if you see something, if you're a card snob or if you're a comic snob and you see a card video or if you see a comic video, don't unsub, just move on to the next. And I promise I will put out something that you will like, especially if you're into comics. I've been recording a lot of cleaning and pressing stuff, guys. So we're going to be having cleaning and pressing uh, uh, tutorials. And then I'm going to have a new show called Kiss of Life, Secrets of the CPR. And um, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys secrets on if you guys want to do this stuff yourself, uh, correct press and resubmit. Thank you guys for watching. I love you all. I really appreciate you guys. Your undying support is, it means so much. Joe Co Cosmic One, your books, they're going out finally. Okay. So if you don't receive it by new comic book day, or let's just say the end of the week, I'm going to let you punch me in the face live in front of everybody on the hot 10. Until next time. Toodaloo.